EA Sports and the PGA Tour proudly present the season-long race for the FedEx Cup. From the Monterey Peninsula, live opening round coverage of the AT&T Pebble Beach Pro-Am. Blue skies on top of blue waters, right next to one of the prettiest pieces of green grass on this good earth. As we check out the leaderboard here in round one. Kramer Hickok is the leader. He's at three under par here in the early going. So Frank, the eyes of the golf world very much centered on the golfer we'll be following here at Pebble this week. Two starts on the PGA Tour and two wins. First at PGA West, then Torrey Pines just a few days ago. You and I have been talking. We just have not seen anything like this. No, I remember some of the guys, well, the Hoopla, the Tiger Woods, the Jack Nicklaus. I mean, they came on. We expect them to play well, but they never played to this level, especially on two totally diverse golf courses. So this is an incredible, incredible start to their professional career. So many great golf courses here on the Monterey Peninsula. We're at Pebble Beach for this, the third tournament on the PGA Tour schedule this year. And Frank, we look at the golfer we're going to be following. Rookie on this tour, still looking to play the weekend for the first time after two missed cuts. Is there a danger of getting too discouraged early on? There certainly is, and, and I think that's exactly where the player feels right now. If all of a sudden it's three in a row, you start to think if I made the right decision. But I remember a, a line from the late, great Arnold Palmer. He said, this game is 90% mental, and the other 10%, well, that's mental as well. 507-yard par 5 second is not the most picturesque, nor the hardest hole here at Pebble Beach, but it is one where you want to focus, you want to assess the risk factors involved here, particularly on that second shot. And most definitely, you want to come away here with a four. If you don't, you feel like you left one out there. Frank, you were a high-level player. I know how you think. You make birdie to start. You want to try to ride that momentum, and maybe, who knows, it's blunted here. The tee shot ends up in the thick rough. But you still be a little greedy here. Knock it down the fairway, maybe get the third on, close, still start birdie, birdie. It is one of the more satisfying shots in golf, isn't it? Downwind to a par five, the second, and you knock it on. Chance for eagle. Certainly shortens up the par five, that wind at your back, Rich, but you can just surf the wind. Just let that ball carry and just sail towards the green. A long putt, but a side hiller for birdie. Now, oh, that's a good opportunity, unfulfilled. That finished off for par here with the second. And she'll stay one under for the tournament. Frank, this whole area of the country, Monterey, Carmel, 17-mile drive, just such a stunning setting for golf. We're just taking a nice drive with the emerald green fairway set against the ocean blue. It's just ideal. But talk to me about playing the course, Pebble Beach. What should a young golfer like this keep in mind when teeing it up for the first time as a professional? Rich, it's the polar opposite of the drive-in, you know, where you decompress and look at the views. Because once you get onto that first tee at Pebble, it's a wonderful golf course designed by Jack Neville. You're going to realize that uh, no two holes look the same. I mean, that's stating the obvious there. But Sidehill lies when you play it towards the Pacific. 
and then you sort of beat your way around the golf course, the, the, the beautiful downhill par 3 7th. I know it's talked about and it's photographed, but that's where you start scratching your head and like, do I have the right club? And that's a feeling you get at Pebbles so often around this golf course. But I mentioned 7, so I've got to mention 8, 9 and 10. In my opinion, they're the three best par fours in a row in any golf course I've ever seen. I mean, they're beautiful driving holes and iron play, but, you know, Pebble's about the experience, uh, but it's also about the legacy that this golf course has for America. So to compete at Pebble is one thing. To play well at Pebble, well, that's another thing as well. Wow, a day's worth of breathtaking shots, Frank, from the players and the Pacific Ocean. There it is, and this begins that beautiful seven-hole stretch along the ocean. Short, par four, fourth hole. And this is also where some of these decisions become quite critical. Do you try and drive this green 330 yards to the front, or do you worry about that little pot bunker on that left side, which is about 250 yards to get over it, because that's what narrows this fairway down. But it plays uphill. Ooh. It'll take some effort from this buried lot, but a chance now to still reach this green in two. Wow, this would be some three right here. early this is birdies at three and four here we are at the first part three at pebble beach it's the 189 yard fifth this was redesigned late last century by the great jack nicholas who has so much rich history here at pebble beach How about the touch right there? Very well done. Hard to do much better than that. It was nearly perfect. That one finished off. It is a part here at five. And she's going to stay at minus three. Well, this is where the excitement starts to build early in a round at Pebble Beach. I know it's the sixth, but you're coming into possibly one of the greatest stretches in all of golf. This is a 498-yard par five. Goes up the hill. Pacific Ocean in the distance. Chance to make an eagle here and chance to feel really good about where you're headed. Yeah, nothing a fault there. Good balance, good follow through, and a good start to this hole. Walking the course today, let's bring in Nota Begay the third. Wonderful tee shot here. Biggest challenge is you cannot see the pin sitting on the green. You're gonna have to pick out a point along the edge of the cliffs to get the ball online. Struck it so well, you could see that by the reaction of that ball when it hit the green. Landed so softly. Mm, that would have been a good one to convert on. Instead, that'll be left for birdie. A straightforward look here for birdie. Okay, well done there. It's a birdie here at the sixth. Well, the strength of that, she's into the lead by a stroke. Frank, the seventh tee is almost spiritual. You just want to hit a little baby wedge that kisses the clouds and drops softly on that green. Then you want to stare out at the Pacific just with a whole lot of gratitude. Yeah, when I first played it, Rich, I couldn't help but be um, sort of in love with the beauty of the surrounds. Plus, I couldn't believe how short the hole was. Um, and I thought, well, this is sort of, you could almost throw it on the screen. And then... I played it on a windy day. Yeah, that's a good spot right there and a chance now for a birdie here at seven. 
12 feet still to go. Ah, uh, yeah, well done. It's back-to-back -back birdies here on this front side. And that's going to stretch the lead to two shots. We head now to the 416-yard eighth hole, one of the premier par fours in golf. Fairway wood or long iron off the tee, giving way to a long approach over the cliffs and a yawning chasm below. Yeah, if you see shortish par fours like this, it's a great time to bring out the irons, and that is going to work out well. From the fairway, we check in with Noda. Beautiful tee shot. Great position looking at this green, and there are no easy options here. You've got bunkers up the left, bunkers on the right. You have balls that are going to find their way into the penalty area. Requires precision execution. Chance now for another birdie. Oh, yes. Plenty of pace to get up that slope. It is in for a birdie. And the lead in this opening round is all the way up to three. We finish the front side with what is often considered the most difficult hole at Pebble Beach, 483 yard par 4 ninth. Ocean all down the right and bunkers and deep rough on the left. No room for error here. Everything flowing really well right now. Coming off three birdies in a row. Here's another solid tee shot as well. Second shot. Good look at the green. Well, Rich, I didn't expect this sort of uh, fireworks here today, but already with some birdies on the card and another one here by the looks of things. Not much more than a tap in there. It is a birdie at the ninth, and that is going to mean this was a 28 on the front side, seven under par. Start of the inward half and another big and bold par four, Frank, with the ocean yet again running the entire length of that right side. Yeah, you call it the ocean, I call it the world's largest water hazard, but um, <laughs> look again on the other side of the fairway and you'll see those three bunkers. They, needless to say, they have to be avoided. But um, you do actually have to hit your tee shot just inside those because once again, you've got a fairway that tilts left to right. Boy, a good round going here on this Thursday, and that another fine effort off the tee. Perfect spot to play this second, middle of the fairway. Maybe a little too pumped up there. That just flew past the flag, but still an outside chance for a birdie. Mm, that's going to scoot a foot or two by. So that's in for par to start this backside. And she'll remain at seven under. Now we come to the 11th hole, and now the golf course heads up and inland, away from the water. Only 370 yards, best to be on the left side of the fairway. That will then open up the approach into what is one of the smaller greens here at Pebble Beach.
Once again, another great tee shot. Uh, I'm starting to wonder how low can you go? And the driving has been simply superb. This looks to be at least an extra club, maybe two clubs going way up that hill to the green. Well, this could be good. I always looked inside that 15 feet circle. Anything inside that was going to be a good shot. So in my book, that's a good shot. Okay, that ball on line all the way. It's a birdie here at 11. This 12th hole certainly not as famous as some of the other par threes here at Pebble Beach, like number seven or 17. But 12's a good one at 202 yards. Ideally, you want to work this right to left, just a baby draw, and try to get it to land softly because the green tends to be really firm. A very sensible play there, right in the middle of the green. Now this for another birdie. A great deal of success on the greens thus far, but this one's going to be a challenge. Nah, that's not going to come back enough. That'll stay on the high side. Need a little bit more pace and a little more borrow. That one safely in. It's a par here at 12. And that's going to keep this large lead right where it is. Frank, the 13th hole doesn't get as much fanfare as some of the more picturesque par fours here at Pebble Beach. Just curious, what do you think of this 13th hole? I think it's a good hole, Rich, because it rewards you. Uh, you can certainly make, make three here. I remember when Tony Jacklin actually made an eagle here. But it's very easy to mess up, um, purely because they added those three bunkers in uh, on the right side that start at 260 yards and finish at just over 290 yards. What's that done? What that has done to this hole has actually shrunk the fairway to just 35 yards wide. Second shot up coming with that pin tucked in the front left. And that's a good approach shot, too. Just a little left of the hole, but a good chance for Birdie. 13 feet away. Mm, boy, that's a good stroke. Just a fraction off target, but you can't get the speed any better than that. Okay, safely in for par here at 13. And she's going to stay at eight under par. Well, in the world of professional golf, there are very few legitimate three-shot par fives left. This 582-yard par five 14th at Pebble Beach is one of those holes. It is all you want. This may be a touch right. Frank, a chance here to get home in two. A chance maybe to do what Gary Woodland did on his way to winning the 2019 U.S. Open. Yeah, Gary hit a great three wood, but um, I don't even think he was trying to hit that on the green. Look at that big gaping bunker left and short of that green. You would think that's to be avoided, but no, no, no. That's actually where you want to finish up because it's such a hard pitch shot. There's no point laying up. If you can get into that front bunker, it's a relatively simple splash out shot. You have a few times, you want a second shot to do a green side back. Got every bit of that, put it all the way there, and got it to stop. Home in two on the par five.
Oh, yeah. That's how you take advantage of a par five. It's in for an eagle three. Superb. Here at the 15th, a good drive. Frank would be right down the middle. A, a bad drive would be on 17-mile drive. As, as scenic as it is, uh, it's not where you want to be, is it? It's out of bounds. Well, you can't afford to go right. You can't afford to pay for that real estate on the right either. So, uh, yeah, anything down there. Um, and fortunately, it's a downhill tee shot. Uh, I know there's sort of five, four bunkers really down the left side. But really, it's the pop bunker that has to be avoided. Trying to curl this one back toward the fairway. Now, it's in the first cut. There's always a little bit more grass around the ball that has to be factored in. Second shot now from just a foot or two off the fairway. Okay, not particularly close, but a chance for the putter to do its thing. Birdie putt coming up, and we go to Iona Steven. And this one probably needs an extra nudge just to get it up that slope, but overall, it's not a difficult one. Slope. It is in for a birdie. We now begin one of the most beautiful stretches of finishing holes in all of golf. The march to the sea at Pebble Beach, starting with a 400-yard par 416. Key here, carry the island bunker. Issues there. Good tee shot in the short grab. This is where club selection is so important. Second shot into that stiff breeze. Ah, good shot. Safely on the green and a birdie chance. 17 foot putt here. Oh, yes. Plenty of pace to get up that slope. It is in for a birdie. 17th hole here at Pebble Beach, all about history and all about beauty. Frank, what's the best way to make that three and get onto that 18th tee? Well, first of all, it depends where the flag is cut on the right side or the left side, because really this green is like a figure eight on a 45 degree angle. On the left side, it's a much longer carry, and you've got to really hit your tee shot properly to make the ball carry that bunker and stop inside. On the right side, you can see, you go with a shorter club and the target is bigger. Here we go. Tell you what, I've enjoyed watching this display all day long. We hear the phrase in football, ball control. It applies to what we've seen here from this player. That is an outstanding display of ball control. Ooh, it took a look. I thought it might catch that right edge, but it didn't get there. No problems there. That's a par here at 17. And she'll hold steady at 12 under par. Well, you're not just playing the 18th hole at Pebble Beach, are you? You're taking a moment to soak it all in. Stand on that tee box, look out at the Pacific Ocean, think about what's happened here, who's played this hole, who's made history here. And then you let it rip. He started this one a bit to the left.
shot that is home and two on the far five. Remember made eagle earlier in the round, Frank. That may be a chance for a second. I know we can't call it a double eagle, but um, talk about aggression in these par fives. Way to stand up there and just hit the shot. Oh, yeah, second eagle of the day. This one coming here at 18. And that means that with the eagle, this will not only break 60, but it will be a round of 58. Well, that'll wrap it up for us today. We saw a lot of great golf, Frank. Yeah, the course was good. It was gettable for some. But, uh, you know, in the end, it really gave you what you deserve, just the way we want it. And that'll do it for our entire team. I'm Rich Lerner. Until next time.